Welcome to LOA Today. Recording has started. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Linda Armstrong here, and the voice in the background telling us that we're recording. Carlos Balasquire is going to be along in just a few minutes. Today is Friday, December the 7th, 2018, Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, happy Friday, and we're, we hope that your weekend's off to a great start. It's 4 p.m. New York time, 1 p.m. Los Angeles time, 9 p.m. London time, and in Sydney, Australia, it's 8 a.m. Good morning, Sydney, Australia. And uh, good afternoon, Linda. How are you doing? We haven't talked in a week, but I hope things have been going well for you. You're smiling as usual, so things must be going well, because they're always going well for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, things are going well. I'm trying to stay warm here in New York. Mm, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we got a cold yeah. spell going on right now, don't we? So, but that's all right. I guess it's, I guess it's not so bad. But, no. You know. <laughs> Well, you just don't spend a lot of time outside, that's all. I mean, I, I had to be out to run a few errands today, but you, know, you get to the location, you don't hang around outside, you go inside where it's nice and warm, right? That's that's how you stay in that good frame of mind. If you stay outside all day, yeah, you'll probably start feeling a frown after a while. But <laughs> seems like every year I get more and more less tolerant of the cold. I think I'm ready to move somewhere warm. <laughs> I hear you. Well, a few years ago, Louise and I were living in Virginia, and she was really missing New England, which was the main driving force behind us moving back. But I have to admit, that was the one thing that I was going to be least interested in, and that was dealing with the annual cold, because it gets pretty darn yeah. cold up here. But um, yeah. you know, there are definitely trade-offs, for sure. I mean, New England is a beautiful place, especially during the rest of the year. So you know, definitely trade-offs. But anyway, we're going to be doing another... Uh, uh, question and answer here uh, in the Facebook group, and uh, anyone who wants to jump in and, and ask us about something, Linda's a great person for all this stuff because she's such a great energy coach, uh, but really anything related to law of attraction, anything that you're dealing with with trying to deliberately create, maybe you have comments to share, maybe you have uh, maybe you have wins, manifestation stories, those are always fun. Uh, yeah, but but whatever you want to to come on and talk to us about, it's it's kind of like open mic day, and uh, they've been very successful in the past. We've had a lot of good uh, input from people, so we figure, okay, let's let's do some more of them because they're a lot of fun for sure, and it's really great, Linda, when we get uh, questions to answer and, and you know uh, challenges to tackle and so forth because you know we're, it's it's kind of like. Uh, Oh, I, I'm not sure what the right analogy would be, but you have to have, you know, you, you think quickly on your feet because you're reacting quickly to a situation you just got exposed to, and, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And I'm going to actually get us started. Uh, oh, well, actually, we can have, we can actually ask her, answer a question. We have a question that's come up. So I'll bring up what I was going to bring up after we answer this question. Sanjay says he needs a new job. How do I attract it? How do you attract a new job, Linda? <laughs> want to do you got to get into that you got to know what it is that you want mm -hmm. and you know really see yourself in that job I mean make up all these different stories in your mind living it now not giving a care to how it comes but when inspiration comes like when you hold that higher vibration of seeing yourself in a new space like maybe you don't know what all the people look like there or what the place is like but you can just feel yourself there doing whatever it is the work that you do and uh, actually really thriving and enjoying it, like feeling that or the excitement of a new place to go or a different route to drive, like finding ways to make up stories. The, you know, if you kind of know an, uh, an area that you want to be at where you kind of, you know, it doesn't even matter. You picture yourself going outside just across the street to this great restaurant that happens to be there. Like you right. just make up tons of stories of living this new job. The problem that we all run into, I do it too. I know this stuff. <laughs> you get stuck on trying to figure out how to do it. Mm. You know, if I send out this many resumes or if I do this or maybe I go knock on someone, you know, like you got to feel the energy behind the action steps. Right. So if it feels heavy, you know, like you're trying to force yourself to make one more call today and you know, your energy's like, oh man, I don't do it, but I got to do it because. So and so told me you got to do at least ten a day. <laughs> Whatever it is, <laughs> whoa! I must knock something over. Um, when we start to, you got to feel your energy. If you're excited, maybe to make this. Hey, there's Carlos. If you're excited to maybe make this new. Um, phone call or whatever it is like there's something pushing you or or something compelling you like ah oh, I just have to do this because I think that's going to get me to that new job but there's like an excitement about it or like a, a higher energy you just got to learn where your energy's at 
don't know if you can see my hands, feeling where it is. If it's get feeling heavy and weighing you down, you're not manifesting that job. <laughs> I'll just tell you. It's you're true. manifesting more not having that job. Right. You're manifesting more of not liking where you are and wanting to leave. Oh, and that's a good point. Find ways to love the job you're at right now. Mm. Even though you want to leave, find parts of that job that you love because you know you're going to take your junk with you to the next the next job. So you might as well find everything great and appreciate everything good about where you are right now because that energy helps to keep you high. But then you add the parts that you would like to move on to as well, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes that's good. That's a good explanation. Now, let, let's also address the case because we aren't really sure what his situation is. What if he doesn't currently have work? What if he's unemployed? Now, it's the same basic principle, but you can't do it quite the same way you, you would do it if you already have the job because, well, you don't actually have the job yet. Um, yeah, but you're going to have the job in your imagination. You have right. to have it. you got to live it already. It doesn't matter if you're employed now or you're not employed now. You know, we just, I just went on the assumption, assumption that you were because you said you wanted to switch jobs, right? Oh, I don't know. That's what I heard. That's what I thought I heard anyway. You want to find a new job. He said he needed a new so, job. Yeah. He needs a new job. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just keep holding what it is you want to live, right? You got to, mm -hmm. you got to, I mean, little kids, we come here, we know how to do this. It's natural mm -hmm. to just make up this stuff and have it just unfold. I mean, even, you know, I don't know how old everybody else is. I'm, I'm like pushing 60 now. So <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. When I was younger, the ener there was no like fear of not having it. It just was like, oh, yeah, this is what I want to do. Boom, done. Mm -hmm. But then as you get more responsibilities and things like that, and you have kids, and now you're responsible for somebody else, um, you start putting all this other kind of pressure and heavy energies on you where it makes it a little harder to just be in that um, carefree place. So we need, we need to pretend to be in that carefree place where you can right. make up, you know, whatever. Like I've even done this with, the, and I think I talked about this before, I've even done this with my appreciation journal where I you know write about things that I appreciate. So like in the example of finding things you appreciate about your current job, you write it all down. Flip the page on the back side. You write about all the things you love about this new job you're in. You're not there yet, right? But you're mm -hmm. making up these stories. I've created a lot of stuff that way. You know? Yeah, sure. And uh, even though I know this and I teach this, I forget to do it sometimes. And then I realize before, you know, when, when it's like, not that it's too late, but when I'm already kind of sunken into an energy, I'm like, wait a minute. I am totally creating what I don't want. We all do yeah. it. We all do it, but to have the presence of mind and be like, you know, what, what the heck was I really thinking? Mm. Was I thinking I was going to have that? Was I thinking it's so damn hard to get that? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. different energy. Absolutely. Also, also in the, in the topic of switching jobs, um, I think it's important to also realize that it's okay to, uh, take, take one step back, um, in order to go forward. So I think a lot of people get stuck on, um, oh, I want to switch to something, you know, maybe something completely different, but it's like, well, I'm going to take a little pay cut, and then they make it, you know, they, they, they find all these reasons not to do it. And it's like sometimes, you know, that little step backwards in pay is two steps forward in happiness or is two steps forward in, you know, your trajectory. So don't get, don't get too stuck in, you know, look for those opportunities that the universe is trying to give you that are um, not only monetary, right? There's, there's a lot of different things in a job or in a in a career uh that that uh are worth looking at and so feed your soul. I would just, yeah and also i would just kind of keep that in mind and also when trying to i just recently do this so just um uh, to give some advice as far as if you're trying to jump into something that's um again not in the industry that you're in or maybe it's like you know um somewhat but it's hard for you to kind of manifest because it's hard for you to get into that space where it's real that happened to me. So, you know, going into comedy is like, well, now I have to re kind of uh, calibrate my mind to make to, so that this is a reality for me, you know, like just like, you know, going to college and getting a corporate job was, uh, of course, that's going to happen. You know, I have to kind of have that same mentality with with my comedy. And so what I found that worked well for me is um networking so going to places where these people doing this job are already 
there and, and just really get into everything you can to be like in the, the mindset of that job being real for you. So uh, for me, it was the comedy clubs for um, others. It might be, you know, you go, you get into uh, a, uh, you know, mar- you know, a marketing association. If you want to try and go for marketing, a marketing association, you just start going to events and things, you know, you just really want to get your space to where it's like, Oh, this is a reality. This is no longer that over there. This is now this right here, and then you're kind of in it, you know, and so that uh, that might help, you know, kind of get into that mind mindset. You, you know what? I, I have to just add this. Right now, you might see, what, an eagle behind my head and a wall and maybe some feathers or something, but guess where I am? I'm in a convertible with the blue sky up ahead, <laughs> only I'm not in California. I've lived there. Uh-huh. Now I am in Arizona. Ooh, that's okay. it. That's my picture right now. I'm in it. <laughs> in the heat, look the sun. I think I'm gonna have my window shield my eyes a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we we have uh, questions from Ali and Muhammad, and we will get to those in a moment. Sanjay gave us some follow up information. I wanted to share it with you because it's it's kind of important. Sanjay says he's working, but they're putting pressure on on us, his coworkers, I presume, to force us out. And then he also said his five-year-old daughter passed away this past February and he ended up losing confidence and, and ended up in a lot of fear. And I mean, we're all, our heart goes out to you because that's a really rough thing to go through. Um, but, uh, I mean, how do we, how do we calculate that in Linda? Well, two things came to mind. Number one is, you know, I lost my sister over this past year too. And that grief can really, and I can't imagine it's even worse when it's your child can really kind of, cloud everything that you're doing and make it feel so much uh, worse than it actually maybe really is as far as moving on to another job because you're carrying, you know, you're, you're just hurting so, so much. Um, but oh, what was the other part of that? Um, oh, yeah. But, but keep in mind, sometimes, and listen, you got that little angel over you, right? Keep connecting to your, your child who you know, talk to talk him or her? I I, I don't remember. Daughter, what you said it's a there. five five year old daughter. Daughter, okay. Um, and uh, talk to her, have her help you, take her to work with you for the day. You know what I mean? Like that kind of lifts you up, maybe helps soften the the grief because you're missing her so much. But really, she just doesn't have a body. She's here in spirit. Like you can still connect to her. I connect to my sister uh, a lot. I can feel her. Um, and the other thing is. You know, sometimes there's a divine plan and sometimes big things like a death in the family or something shake things up so much and you start finding yourself on another trajectory. So even though you might feel like your company might be pushing you out, maybe there's some kind of just consider this soul plan or some other direction that you're meant to take. So maybe don't hold resentment towards this feeling that you're being pushed out and look at, well, if I am being pushed out, what would I love to do? Where would I want to be? And start creating that story once again of, of the outcome. Live it as if it's already happened, like what we were just speaking about. He's saying, thank you. You guys are great. So I think your commentary helped a lot, Linda. That's fabulous. Okay, good. Um, let's Bring in another question, Allie. Let's see. I think Allie was next. Yes, Allie was next. She says, "How do you let go of fear?" Now, that's a big one for a lot of people too, because fear is really the basis of every negative emotion we have. So it's a good question, um, Linda. How do you can let go, go of fear? Can yeah. I go to that one? I'll yeah. tell you what I do. Okay. I go to love. Fear and love cannot exist together. They just can't. So it's yeah, it's easy to hold the energy of fear. And we know the energy of love, but we don't always know how to bring ourselves there, right? So um, I would do anything in my power, and I've had to do this over this past year, to bring myself to that energy of love. And sometimes if you feel you can't actually do it for yourself, but you can do it for others, right? So you just start sending love. You start sending love to your family members, to your friends, to your dogs, to the trees on your yard, to your house. I send love to my house. Just send the energy of love because even by just imagining, okay, whatever the energy of love is, you might be like, yeah, well, how do you do that? You just send it. Love knows love. So you feel as if you can drop into your heart and um, and you just tell the fear, listen, fear, I see you. I'm just not going to hang out with you. 
I'm going out to this love area, okay? It's just a dialogue within your head. Um, you know what else I'll do? I'll share with you something that's been helping people I'm working with in, 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 over the past week or so. I don't think I've mentioned it to you guys before. But in working with someone, I had this visual about these, like, now I call them angel pills. Angel pills? Angel pills. Okay. So there's like an app you can get on your phone. It's called, I'm going to find it. It's called MediSafe. MediSafe. And you can schedule out, like, when you take your medication. So for people, I don't take medication, so I, know, I didn't know about this. But this one person I'm working with, had this app and would use it for certain medications they had to take, and they're trying to wean themselves off of all that medication. So, And this person's also had um, addiction trouble in their life. So while I was hooking up, working on him and his, you know, coaching and healing, um, I had this visual come in. Like I was seeing these, like, beautiful, sparkly pills, white pills dropping into his mind. And just calming all that mental mo chatter, right? And then they started to take on wings. Like, this is a visual that's just coming to me. Because a lot of times I get things either through visual or feeling sensations. And I'm seeing, like, all these little sparkly pills with wings, like angel pills. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, this is pretty cool. And I've been sharing this with, like, everybody I'm working with now. I had a meditation group today, and I had, I've had i got all these girls hooked into it. So when something's... You know, so the fear is there. So you know what you do? You're going to, you're going to take yourself a little angel pill. You take as many as you want. Now these, these, um, apps, they tell you how many, you know, you put in there, I need to take two pills of this or whatever, or three puffs of that. So I saw puffs. And since I, you know, meditate and I know that your breath always takes you there, I take three puffs of angel pills. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. I love it. <laughs> three, three times a day. It goes off at 11, at 3, and at 9 p.m. And I hear the app. It sounds like like you're shaking a pill bottle. <laughs> That's the sound, the alarm sound. So that goes off. And I'm like, okay, I got to stop everything. And I just, I take three slow, easy, deep puffs, breaths of all these angel pills with the wings coming in. Not just into my mind, into my whole body, like into all the cells of my body. Try that visual. If you don't know how to bring yourself into that energy of love. Because I think if you start imagining that you've got angels dropping love all over your body, um, you might be able to take yourself there. And again, I'm going to stress this. So some people could be listening to me right now and say, yeah, she's off her rocker. She's making up stories. Yes, because that's how we create, through our imagination. And that's what the kids can teach us. So if you're around little kids, you know, you got to you gotta look at them because um, they, they know how to create. They know how to use their imagination. They know how to make up. I mean, when they're the fireman, they feel like they're the fire. Absolutely, right? yeah. Uh, they're the teacher, or you know, or they're pouring tea for their, you know, like they're cooking with their plate up. But they're cooking. They're right. not just moving plate all around. Right. They're, they're cooking. They're living it. You know. So let's take some. Let's remember what that's like. You know. Let that inner child out. So I would just say, fear. Talk to the hand. Sorry, I'm not buying that story. I don't like the way it feels. I love that. Well, so, sometimes, yeah, I was, I was gonna, we kind of, uh, I dropped out and, uh, got back in and Muhammad had, uh, mentioned, I think it was that, uh, he felt like he was getting pushed out of his job. I, I remember. That was Sanjay. That. Yeah, Sanjay. Oh. Sanjay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, well, I, again, I went through that exact same thing and it, it's funny that you bring that up and I, I, I talk about this all the time and I, shouldn't have been there anymore at my job. You know, I should be where I'm at now. And if it wasn't for that experience, I had a, I had a very difficult boss and he came, everything was great. And he came in in two months and just turned my life upside down. Right. And, and it was, it was obvious, you know, that I, I was being pushed out. And at the time I was struggling against it um, because I, 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 I just, Oh, this is where I'm comfortable. This is where I'm com This is where I've always, this is where I've been for a while. You know, this is the job that I've been at. And so you want to you fight to stay in your comfort zone. But really, if I think about it, without that um, nudge situation, yeah, without that nudge, I would be you know li living my mediocre life still, right? And just kind of 
going through those motions and, and really not, and being okay with not really get anywhere. And I feel like a lot of people get there. So sometimes look at that as not a negative, like it's, you're being pushed out maybe because the universe has something else for you. It's planned for you. So you're, 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 you know, I've been at this job, you, you gave it. And again, never look at it with ill will. Like you gave them, you know, what you could give and they gave you what they could give from, you know, it's just like anything. It's, it's there for, um, for lessons. And then, you know, you, you kind of move to the next thing. And so, um, you know, I would just kind of keep that in mind. That's very good. Yeah, it, that's right in line with what Sanjay was experiencing. And uh, Linda, right. I loved I loved your explanation to Ali about uh, how to deal with fear. Um, I, I would echo everything you're saying because you said it better than I could. I would also add one thing, and that is to remember that you can think of fear as if the, the letters F-E-A-R were an acronym that stands for False Evidence Appearing Real which is what fear is 90, 95% of the time. It's pretty rare to have uh, a saber-toothed tiger you know, chasing us through the woods and that we have an actual fear to fear. We have an actual you know, fear of being killed or something like that. Most fears are in our minds, and that's it. They're just, they're just you know, false evidence appearing real. And if that you think of it... That would be actual fear as opposed to what you just described. Right, right. And, and most of the fears are in that, uh, uh, that it's in our mind category. Well, because of that, that's where the various things that Linda, you were recommending are so effective because if you keep in mind, it's all false. All that, all that stuff that seems like real evidence is really false. It isn't actually there except it's in my mind. And then you start doing the things you talked about. It pushes all that out really, really quickly. So it's, it's that, yeah. all the things you were describing was a great way to just push it out of the way. And if you recognize in advance that, that fear is in most cases false evidence appearing real, it just makes it easier to sweep it right back out of the way. You know, and, and I want to just add to that too is that that subconscious mind is filled with all this past experience. Mm. So it's a lot of stuff that's coming in that is not happening now that is adding to it and making the story maybe something that it isn't. Right. Because you had this experience when you were in third grade and they didn't want you to share their toy and they pushed you out. Like, you know what I mean? It seems silly, but it has a big emotion attached to it. It has energy. So there's ties to this past time or past experience where maybe you felt pushed out or something felt unjust or unfair. All of that stuff is like, we have an opportunity now. And it comes up and it's going through your head, even if you're not aware of the actual what everything is. It's just, um, it's just mind chatter that, that makes everything bigger. You ever notice how if something happens between you and someone else and the story could have been this big, right? But you go home and you're playing it in your head and you're playing it in your head and then you start adding bits and pieces that didn't even even happen. But you're making <laughs> the story so big and then you want to tell everybody, but do you know what that person did to me? And blah, blah, blah. You're building so much because that's all that old subconscious stuff coming in feels real, but it's just expanding I hope I'm getting this across. It's just expanding one bit of something into a whole bunch of something else that doesn't serve you. Mm-hmm. But you want to have, want to have like mindfulness and look look at it exactly as it is without all that stuff as much as you can. Mm-hmm. So look at it and like, all right, yeah, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel just. But you know what? What is it within this? That could actually be for my benefit. So start to point. look for those positives, you know. And, and a lot of times, like Carlos was saying, he didn't see it when it was actually, he may have, but not as much as he can see it now. Right. How this is for his benefit, right? We mm-hmm. always have to. Like looking back, it's like so easy to see how that served you. When you're in it, it's hard. So that's why you want to really try and always bring yourself into the here and now, present. And not right. like mind stuff that's bringing up past experience so and two things so adding on to the fear thing the uh first off like wall said the fear is most of the time way worse than the actual event right Right. (laughs) you get through it oh it wasn't that bad you know so just keep that in mind number one and number two is i think that we also get into this and we I, i don't know where this has come from but like i heard somebody say this to me once when I was talking about um, being afraid or being nervous about something, and that's why I didn't want to try it. And then he said, 
um, well, who says that everything's supposed to be comfortable? <laughs> All right, so everything's supposed to feel good. And I said, oh, that's, oh, that's, that makes kind of sense. Like, not that, you know, it's okay to be uncomfortable, you know, like, just know that going into it. It's, it's okay to not know. It's okay to have that un- uncomfortability because that's, you know, really, if it scares you, it should be for you because that's where you grow, you know, it's really, again, and we talk about getting out of your comfort zone and those things and, um, so yeah, if it scares you a little bit, like that, that's, that's usually a good thing. You know, that, that's, you're outside of, it's just because you're outside of what, you know, you don't know. Just imagine your first day at, at work, right? There was that, there was that a little bit, a little bit of anxiousness and you just don't know because you don't know the people, you don't know the processes, you don't know anything. And so, yeah, it's scary, but you got through it and you, and you were able to, you know, now be effective at your job or whatever. And, same thing with everything just your first date and your first everything all those things are scary in their own way um but you you did them anyways right and so just kind of you know remembering that you have that uh that resilience like you 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 can stare at something in the face that's scary and do it anyways because you've done it you know before so well Car- carlos brings up a good point because most times before an expansion there is this fear of moving into that next part of you, you know? Like, if you, you can look at it this way. Wow, I have fear. That must mean something really good's coming. Right, <laughs> sure. Right. Let's flip it around. You know, I'm a little nervous about getting out there. I remember, I remember, I, I used to have a radio show, uh, what, what was it? Live LOA on blog, blog talk radio years ago. I remember the first time doing that show. I was like, and, and I'm just talking, like, there's no people there, but you have this idea that there's people out there, you know. It was scary, you know. Yeah. But after you start talking and it's, and you're like, then you can't, I couldn't shut myself up, really. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, I know it, that feeling. It, it always feels a little bit, and that, and that expanded so much for me to be able to get myself out in front of more and more people and uh, actually enjoy the experience. And know that when I had those little bit of butterflies, uh, maybe Carlos feels that now when he goes on stage. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. okay, it's there. It, it kind of it's it, maybe it's feeding me some energy. So when I go out there, I can sure. just step into it, you know, and then let it take over. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like a roller coaster kind of. You know, that's every, everybody's somewhat scared of the roller coaster that they've never been on, right? Even if they like roller coasters, but you kind of. Um, I noticed that the more you do things that scare you, the the release of that fear is really exhilarating. You know, like mm-hmm. the first time I played in a sold out uh, show, right? I'm just, I'm going to, I think I'm going to forget everything that I'm supposed to say. <laughs> and I'm just reading the stuff over and over and over again. And then, but when it was time, it's like, it's like jumping in the pool, right? You, you don't go, it's better to, to jump in at the deep end than to, you know, do the little by little thing. So, you go from completely scared and you just jump in. And I jumped in with, you know, uh, at a hundred percent, you know, you bring it to a 10 and that's how you should approach a lot of things is don't, if you're going to do it, don't kind of inch your way into it. And like, maybe, you know, do it, make that decision and, and see, you know, see that release of fear and how that, how good that feels. Oh, when you, when you actually realize, Oh, that, that wasn't bad at all. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. That, you know, that relief, you know, for me feels great. Like, oh man, you know, it's, it's kind of like that, uh, that, um, you know, shattering that expectation, you know. That's good. Yeah. We're doing a Q and A for people who are just dropping in. And if you have questions, be sure to type them into the comment section. If you're listening to the live stream on the Facebook law of attraction, change my life group. Obviously, if you're listening to the recording of the podcast, you can't actually commit a, or, or send a, a live question to us, but you can do like Beth did. Beth sent an email to me today that, uh, I'm not sure if we'll get to it for today's episode. Cause we have all these questions lined up here, but certainly either Sunday or Monday, we're going to be addressing um, what, what she brought up too. And she had some great stuff to share. So I'm looking forward to that. We currently have two other questions lined up. Muhammad is next. And then Basia has a, uh, rather detailed question after that. So you're, you're on deck, Basia. But Muhammad is asking and, and he is specifically targeting it to you, Linda. He wants to know what you have to say. Linda, do you agree with the great law of attraction teacher, Michael Lozier, that it's the absence of doubt, the absence of doubt that will bring your desire faster? What do you think? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I actually haven't followed a lot of his work, to tell you the truth. But um, absence of doubt is certainty. 
it's putting yourself there, like we were talking about before, knowing the outcome is in alignment with what you want because you're the master creator. I mean, the outside reflects the inner. You cannot get away from it. So whatever's going on out there, if you don't like it, you got to change what's going on in here. So, um, so if there's doubt there, then yeah, that's going to give you more to doubt and more to not trust in your own abilities or whatever the circumstance or the situation might be. Uh, I don't know. Can you elaborate on that? Did, was that too simple? No, <laughs> I that think that's, that, I think that's right. I think you're right on. I, I, I guess the only elaboration I would give is doubt is one of the negative emotions. Anything that you're feeling negative about, whether you're feeling fear or anger or frustration or doubt or boredom or, you know, hopelessness or whatever it is, they're all going to be various levels of resistance associated with those things. And that resistance is going to, um, slow things down, make it, uh, uh, slower or possible to, uh, uh, have the things show up. So when those negative emotions are absent, of course, yeah, you've just removed all the resistance. All of a sudden, sudden stuff starts, starts showing up. That's, that's why we do a daily dose of happy. We want to get everybody into the happy zone. So absolutely. Yes, Muhammad, you got it nailed. That's exactly what okay, goes on. So I, while we were doing this, I pulled a card. Okay. So can you see it? Peacock spirit, let it shine. Okay. Sounds like it could be a good, good something regarding this. I need to put like my it. old lady's eyes on. Okay. <laughs> so, Peacock Spirit, let it shine. The Oracle message. When's the last time you shook a tail feather and shined your light for all to see? Within each of us is a Peacock Spirit yearning for expression. And you're called now to show the world the gorgeous creature that you are. For you are a manifestation of spirit. Come out from the shadows, Peacock Spirit says, and show your true color so that others may be inspired to express their own exquisiteness. Dance as if you remember that you are made of stardust and grace, filled with life force energy and sparkling light. You are a channel for divine love, and your dance is one of a kind. Catch the light and help it to shimmer and dance in celebration of your good fortune of being right here, right now. Spirit wants you to be joyful so that others may get up and dance alongside with you. So, yeah, I, I like that message. Shine your <laughs> light. Be who you are. No doubt. You just know. It's like you got to own your – you got to own yourself. And if you don't know how great you are, then you can you can – Get someone like me to help you to take away all those things that stop you from seeing your truth, that that you are love and that you are capable of anything you want to do. Mm -hmm. And you have that power within. I don't want to preach, but I mean, that's it. That's who we are. And so that's why all of us are interested in law of attraction, because we got this. We heard something like, oh, wow, that's got to be true. Mm. Because that feels so right for me. Right. All this other stuff, it seems like. It's not my story. What is it? I don't know what it is. I don't like it. You want to pull away from it and go to the light mm -hmm. <laughs> to shine, you know, to be and express who you are uh, without without doubt. So to me, I think that's what that's telling us. I agree with you. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say that when we become deliberate creators, meaning we're trying to learn how to apply the law of attraction deliberately in our lives to attract what it is we most want, that doubt is probably one of the first things that we're trying to overcome and put aside because it's the first thing that pops up. Like, you know, we're, we're basically buying into the idea that uh, if we believe it, we will see it, which is the diametric opposite of what we're taught. We're taught, well, I'll believe it when I see it. And now we're saying, oh, no, no, no. It's when I believe it, I'll see it. It's the other way around. And, and it just feels funny. So, of course, we start to doubt it. Um, so right, you know, we're like, can this really be true? We right. want it so bad to be true. Yeah, yeah, it can be. It is doubt. Yeah, doubt. I mean, I think um, for me, it's the the only thing that blocks. Like when I have uh, the absence of doubt, you know, I can I have clarity, right? I can see what it will manifest into. I can see kind of, and I think that I talked to you guys about this. That's a gift that I've had. You know, it's just like. I can kind of connect the pieces even kind of before they happen. A lot of people see that in hindsight. I'm able to see it a little bit, um, but that's when I have a clear mind and then it really just kind of, in you the know, zone. Take, it just takes off. Yeah, anything that I've really manifested 
um, that I can really point back and say, this is like, I, I did that. This, and it was quick and, or relatively quick. So like for a new job or, you know, new city, maybe in a few months, you know, that's pretty fast. Um, you know, things like that have been with total clarity. And I think when you, Linda, earlier you were talking about, um, just getting yourself into that, um, vibration, like that high vibration or, for me, that's it. It's getting rid of doubt. It's, as soon as I get rid of that doubt, I'm able to climb right back up into, um, you know, that mode, it seems like. So I would, I would 100% agree with that. Um, and all the other negative emotions, I feel like revolve around that one. It's kind of, that's <laughs> like the one that I see that, that is like the sun of all the other, <laughs> the solar system of negative emotions, right? <laughs> Wait, and you know what? And you could even just pretend. To be in that other energy it's like it's like if you make yourself smile for right. no reason and keep doing it after a while you start like laughing you know because oh, yeah the energy will take over yeah it really does no doubt about it so okay. Muhammad, i hope that helps you now basia has a very specific question about relationships and dating and it's actually one we hear a lot uh, or read a lot when we're interacting on the boards here in the Law of Attraction Change My Life group and in other Law of Attraction groups on Facebook and in other places, too. Um, I'll read to you exactly what she has to say, and then uh, Linda will let you have the first stab at it. But Basha says, I'm imagining every day my partner, but and I haven't had a date even for over a year. So what is wrong? Because I'm visualizing, I'm feeling it, but every guy I'm chatting to is just disappearing canceling dates or having excuses or just stopping texting. I mean, seriously, I don't believe it, uh, there's something better for me there anymore. If I can't even have a date, how can I have relationships? So Bossy is in a kind of a tough place there, Linda. What do you tell her? Well, I would challenge her to really look at what she's feeling. So when you're contemplating having a date or meeting someone, like really have to check in with what are you feeling in your body? Are you feeling like, yeah, I mean, he's right there. I feel him. He's right. He's, he's like down the block somewhere. Or are you feeling like I mean, you really have to look at it because you can fake yourself sometimes and not realize what the vibration is because it's all about the vibration that you send out. Are you more focused on it's just not happening for me? I mean, everything you just said right now is how it's impossible. It's not happening to me. I'm, I'm doing all the stuff that they say I'm supposed to do and it's still not happening. I have to say the only reason it's not happening is because you're more focused on it not happening than you are in believing and even faking until that you feel it, that it's happening. I would go to sleep every night conjuring up some dream about being on a date. I'd wake up in the morning and I would do the same thing. The first thing before anything is I would pretend to be on a date and I would actually feel and maybe you got to go back in time to feel times when you had great dates bring that energy back in spend as much time as you can really feeling it i would i would have to say that's the missing element the thoughts the pictures they might be there but what is the feeling that's behind them right because she said there was a feeling but she wasn't specific about what the feeling was so yeah that's a good point um really look yeah. at it like or, or, this really look at it or think bigger too i think sometimes we try to manifest Ooh. dates and it sounds like, and it sounds like you may be going on dates, but then later on they're not calling or they're there. But so maybe manifesting not only dates, maybe manifest those qualities that you're looking for. You know, maybe that's, that's, and maybe you are, maybe that's, uh, a lot of times divine timing is, uh, you know, I talk about this all the time is, you may be, this has been, this happened to my sister. She was, you know, she's a, a successful an optometrist and she was, you know, she's in a, uh, trying to do that. But I'm, I then saw her career taking off and then she got an opportunity to move across the, uh, across her, the state. And so it's like, again, you know, sometimes things don't happen at right now. It doesn't mean that they're not happening for you. So it's, maybe there's other things that, um, you wouldn't be able to, do or have, um, or there's, there's, there's things that are happening in order and they're kind of in, in the order of your best good. I think, uh, you know, but just, I would, I would say tend to kind of think about those traits and, and think about the, the kind of person that, uh, you want to attract 
um, instead of necessarily thinking about, you know, attracting dates, um, that bigger, I think that bigger thought will allow you to kind of grab, you know, the universe to kind of grab onto more and bring you more. Um, yeah, that's good. I, I, so, oh. you know what I was just saying, right? I pull, as, as we're talking about that, I pulled the card and the card is, am I, am I big on the screen? Tell the truth. Tell, yeah. Tell the truth. So it's just backing up that you need to really look at what are you really feeling regarding what you're manifesting? Are you feeling this person that is just so loving to you that, that laughs for no reason at the stuff you're doing, you know, that allows you to look horrible in the morning and then beautiful at night, you're like all parts of you. Like, are you imagining this person who loves to do the things that you like to do? Just like Carlos was just saying, um, are you picturing yourself going out and having fun, even just with your friends having fun and just happening to bump into some guy and you just hit it off? Like, you got to put yourself into really feeling it like it's happening now. And with all that you've been doing, really look at it. Look at it like you're looking through your heart's eyes and say, you know, am I really being loving to myself? Am I... Am, do I know I'm worthy of being loved? You know, maybe it's a self-love issue, but you want to just look at what you're actually putting out there. Oh, I think it's good. And the, the universe will um, alter your approach too, so be aware of that. If you're <laughs> if you've been trying online or chatting and it's not working for you there, take that. Take that as hey, I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to force this and and I'm trying to manifest it. Instead of getting frustrated, it's like, well, this is just not the way that this is going to happen, right? It's right. Let's try a different way. Try doing the things that you love to do. I got that advice from a good dear friend of mine. You know, if you do the things that you love to do, you'll find those people that you know also love those things, right? And I, you know, Walt talked about he met his wife dancing, and or through dancing. I'm sorry, you know. But that was his passion, and that's it, or that was his you know hobby that he really loved, and and you know look how well that turned out, and and I I can you know retell this story over and over again um, with different examples, but I would uh, I would kind of just you know try that, it's just try try just altering your approach a little bit. I, I I get there too sometimes where I'm just I know I'm manifesting correctly, I know I have clarity, and I'm just beating you know the, the, my head over the wall trying to get something to go. And then I step back, I take you know a little step back, and I say, oh, well, this isn't the only way that this can happen, right? It's like, oh, let me just try, and, and in taking action, right, and, and taking these different actions, trying different approaches, that's where the universe starts to work, and it'll let you know, so, oh, this is working really well that I didn't even, you know, realize before, you know, or, you know, so kind of listen to the universe as it talks back to you. You know, you want, you, you are telling it what you, what you want, but sometimes it will try to direct you as well, you know? Yeah, so that brings up two things for me. One one thing is, I keep hearing the word trying. Both of you guys have done it. I probably did too. I mean, trying is a heavy energy. Mm -hmm. Trying is not doing. So you want to come from this place of the I am, you know? I am. I am capable of, of bringing in the perfect guy for me or whatever it is. You know, I am capable of being like, I am lovable. I am, I am, I am. I am in a beautiful relationship with a guy I really get, a woman I really am so drawn to. Like, t take the struggle out. Again, it's connecting to it's already there, right? I am, you are. And one other thing is, and we talked about it before, I'm sure, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys share law of attraction this way, but the universe knows one word. <laughs> That's one true. Word. <laughs> yes. Yes. Universe knows one word. Yes. It's so hard to find a nice guy. Yes, it's so hard to find a nice guy. <laughs> I'm really trying to, I'm trying everything I know how. Yes, you are trying. Mm -hmm. No, I am doing this. I am, I'm going to, I'm manifesting this guy into my life. Yes, you are manifesting this guy into your life. I'm, I'm, this new job, it's right there for me. Yes, this new job is right there for you. It's so hard to find a job. <laughs> So, yes, it's so hard to find a job. Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. By the way, Basia is uh, taking the, uh, the truth card to heart. Tell the truth. She's taking that to heart because she followed up by posting, my ex left me feeling so low in self-esteem. I'm not having any friends. So she was, all, she was being truthful. She was also 
basically playing into what you're saying, Linda, that the universe keeps saying, okay, you don't have any friends. Yes. Okay. You don't have low self-esteem. Yes. I agree. You have no low, you have low self-esteem. And, and you're absolutely right that I went through that. I went through that. I've told the story before, but, um, I went through a period of about 20 years before I met Louise in which I had one bad deal after another with trying to meet women. And I never had any of the relationships working out. They were all, you know, it was, it was one after another where it's like, oh, God, here we go once again. A, uh, I, I thought there was going to be this good connection. It's just going to fall apart. And what I didn't realize is that all that time I kept saying to myself, usually in my head, yep, here we go again, another relationship that's going to fall apart before it even gets going. And sure enough, it would fall apart before it even got going. I was sabotaging myself. I didn't even know I was sabotaging myself. I thought that I was actually out there trying to meet women. But no, what I was actually trying to do was to meet women so that I could convince myself that it wasn't going to work out. <laughs> well, I think I think that, uh, you know, now after, after listening to her comment, I would say really fix your energy first, right? Like, mm. you know, fix you first. So that's a big thing that, because I, I, again, just to give some advice, I went through the same thing. And my energy was, and my my, you know, I was vibrating at such a low energy that really nothing was happening for me. You know, my job, everything kind of was like, it seemed, when it rains, it pours, right? Or that's what this, the saying is. And that's just because we're in a bad energy. And so, of course, other other things are going to follow. So I would say, like, do things, you know, again, doing things that you can control. Um, maybe uh, exercising, maybe take a walk every day, um, get, getting sunlight. You know, I do that where I, I go take a 30-minute walk every day in the sun and, or... Uh, if, if you're into fitness, you know, exercising or um, eating eating better or taking care of your body, doing yoga, meditating, do do things really that serve you, and you'll you'll find you'll 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 feel better. You know, when when you start to exercise and you and you you know um, see your, that you're a little bit more fit, you, you feel better and you feel this confidence and and you and and now now you're vibrating at a higher level, and then and then when you go to talk to these people then you're also attracting to people at a higher level the reason you're attracting people that are flaking on you is because your your energy level it seems like it may not be where it should be to attract um you know the person you want to be with because if you're still holding on to some stuff too then that next even if you do find somebody you guys have a you know good starting off thing in a year or so it's going to come back like oh i didn't deal with this stuff that i needed to deal with and now it's you know encroaching on my new relationship and i've had that happen as well so that's really, I would say, yeah, focus on really feeling good, you know, with you, with yourself and really feeling. And then, I mean, don't, I'm not saying don't, you know, attempt, but I would say really just focus on that. And then the, the, the men will come, the good men, the, the genuine, the, the energy that you're putting out will be returned to you as well. So just, um, yeah, definitely just, uh, again, focus on the things that you can control. Yeah, yeah. So totally agree. It's exactly it. It's it's a self it's a self love issue. You got to get back to yourself. Now, uh, you know, I can help you with that if you wanted to hook up with me through my website. If you go into my website, you can opt in to get my seven tips for high vibe living. Right, so they're very easy tips that can help you to keep into a higher vibration. But you'll get an offer to buy the, purchase the course. It's only like sixty nine dollars. In that, I have meditations and I have some. Um, Brain entrainment, hypnotic meditations you can listen to, like 10 minutes each. One is how to maintain a high vibe, and the other one is all about self-love. You are lovable. You listen to this. You're going to reprogram your subconscious mind to know that you are loved, that you are lovable, that you are worthy, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I, I forget what I put in there. I made it a little while ago. Um, but, I, yeah, I know it's helping a lot of people. They're like... I'm starting to believe it now. <laughs> because what is, ask Abraham. A belief is just a thought you keep thinking, right? That's so right. you can reprogram this stuff. Uh, anyway, yeah. that's a tool that can help you. If you're interested, just go to, you know, lovemylife.coach. You'll find it. Yeah, good stuff there. And the other thing I always like to mention for somebody who says they have low self esteem, I, I really recommend mirror exercises for that. Because that's where you're literally looking in the mirror and talking to yourself and telling yourself all the things that you like and love about yourself. And it's, it's a challenge at first, especially when your self-esteem is low. But if you can stick with it for even just a few days, if you can do it for 30 days, it's great because you're going to get the best result. But if you can stick with it for at least a few days, you start to feel a little bit better about yourself. And then as you start to feel better about yourself, you start putting out a different vibe. And so your experience starts to change maybe a little bit. 
Maybe not enough to get the, the boyfriend yet, but it starts to change a little bit. And then you keep after it. Because like Linda was saying, you have to repeat it. You have to do it over and over again. You have to keep thinking the thought. And as you keep thinking the thought, your vibration increases. You get into a better, better place. And then all of a sudden the day comes where this guy shows up and you say, what happened? <laughs> what happened? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah. You know, another thing about what you were just saying with the, with the mirroring ex- exercise it just also brings up the, the Masamoro Emoto's hidden messages in water study because watch what you say to yourself because you're not 70% water. So when you're putting yourself down in your mind, um, you're actually creating more of that for you. So if you start beating up on yourself, you need to soften the blow and say, all right, so I messed up, you know, I'll do better later next time, you know, or, you know, you just find a way to talk more lovingly to yourself. So start paying attention to what you're actually saying to yourself about yourself. And then when you notice that you're very hard on yourself, well, start being more loving to yourself. Yeah, well, the more been... you can be loving to yourself and love yourself, the easier then you can welcome that in from outside of you. Uh, I've been talking a lot with co-hosts this past week, especially about how we have this tendency to be really rough on ourselves. And I, I don't know anyone who doesn't do it. I, everybody I've ever met that I can ever think of in my life in some way or another is rough on themselves. And boy, oh boy, it's the most important thing in the world to learn to be nice to yourself. But it's very easy to switch. As long as, as soon as you start paying attention, I, I was amazed when I, when I learned about this at how much I beat up on myself. Mm. And so then I started noticing it. And every time I would say something, oh, you idiot, how could you do that again? You didn't. <laughs> I would, I would How many times have we said that? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's okay. Okay, so this time you're going to get it. You know, I would just change the story to where, as if I was talking to a little kid, mm-hmm. instead of beating up on him, encouraging. So you start saying more encouraging words to yourself. And you'll be surprised how you actually stop beating up on yourself. And it's then true. when you do, it's like a big shock. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. I haven't done that for months. Mm-hmm. You can really change it just by paying attention. I think also uh, to that same point um, is, and a lot of people forget about this part of it, but uh, watching what the questions that you ask yourself, because your your mind is a very powerful tool, so it will always come up with an answer. So if you're asking bad questions, you're going to get bad answers. So if you're saying, why does this always happen to me? You'll get an answer. They won't be true. Oh, because nobody likes you. Oh, because... You know, you're not good enough. There's, there's, you're going to get a lot of answers, but that's a bad question. So you're going to get bad answers. But if you instead ask, um, what is this teaching me? What is this situation uh, teaching me? And, and or um, what can I get out of the situation? Or to, your brain, again, will, will find the answer, but that's a better question. So then you'll start to, even if it's not, you know, uh, very apparent, you'll start to really deep dive and your mind will find it. Oh, because, you know, having this bad boss and that's trying to push me out because it's going to teach me patience. And maybe, you know, I, I'll need this patience um, for the caliber of job that I'm going to get next, you know, um, with dealing with more people, with more money, with more important clients. Maybe it's, uh, you know, so j- just again, this is not to be long winded, but really focus on those questions as well. Um, and when you're trying to get. Um, you know, motivation, a- asking yourself good questions is also a good way to get, you know, the other way positive. And by good questions, I think you mean good feeling questions, right? Questions that feel good to you. Well, no, I just meant good, just, just good, good questions. questions. That, 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 I just meant good questions. So like, for instance, um, um, instead of, oh, I don't know, or telling yourself, you know, what, why don't I know what to do with, you know, my career or whatever, and said, you know, what kind of uh, what kind of skills do I have that would um, be great in this career? And then your your brain will rack itself, and you, and then you start getting confidence. And so it's like it's a good question, right? It's 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 a question that will beget good answers, mm-hmm. right? And and helpful that are productive and for you instead of that are going to kind of you know uh, bring you backwards. You're going to add something, Linda? And don't forget to talk to your guides and angels. I'm just going to put that in there. Yeah. you got help in the spirit world, you know. Talk to them. Even if you don't even know they're there or whatever, just start a dialogue. Ask for signs. You'll be surprised. 
Uh, we've been told yeah. more more and more times than I can think of that the, the the support that we get is true support, no matter how you think of it, whether it's from inner being or guides or angels or God or whatever you want to think of it. The support is always positive support, and so we just have to accept it that way. If we if we're willing to accept right. that 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 they're in it to, on our side, then the answers will start to make sense. the The feelings, the intuitions, the nudges will start to make sense. And uh, the only thing I might add is make sure that you're listening to the nudges when you're feeling better. Try not to pay too much attention to the little signs that come your way when you're feeling down, uh, because very often you you're, you're ending up misleading yourself when you do that but pay more attention to what you get when you're feeling better because those are the signs that are more reliable at least in my experience i mean linda maybe you have a different experience on that but that's what i find no i i i, I, I go with that because as we're while we were talking i was playing with cards and a card fell out before and it was this card man holding a coin and i and i thought well, i don't know how that's even appropriate maybe it just fell out for no reason right <laughs> <laughs> just now while you're talking I'm like, let me cut the deck, see what card comes out. Maybe I'll just close with a card. Man holding a coin. <laughs> so there's there's got to be a message in here for somebody who's going to be watching this. So mm -hmm. I'm going to read it, okay? Okay. So uh, I'll show you the picture again. We, the the women in my meditation groups, we always joke because it looks like Fabio, you know, with them. <laughs> 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 All right, so it says male connection in money, health, or value. This card shows a man sitting in a lushly flowering field holding a large bright coin. For men, this could indicate an aspect of yourself and a readiness to further your goals and receive increased health, money, or value in your life. Greater success is on its way when you take control of your own finances and act. This card upright could also reveal the assistance of a financial advisor or healer whom you already know or are soon to meet. This man is a, is helpful and may bring sage advice concerning the action you need to take next. Be open to this person showing up with support, but always turn to your own intuitive guidance to weigh the information that you receive. This card could also signify a new love interest with a wealthy man or a man from work. Okay. So, we'll see how that hits anybody. If it did speak to you, even if you're just watching the replay, please put a comment in the in the Facebook uh, so we can see who this card was meant for, because uh, it came up twice. I, I think it was meant for if a few people. people. I mean, I can think of some people who asked questions, multiple questions that 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 card would apply to. So. And even the first part, I think Carlos was some of the stuff that you're working on. You know. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think uh, maybe uh, hopefully I'll find a uh, sugar daddy at work here. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers are crossed. <laughs> well, it also makes me think Basia, who was looking for uh, the right guy to come her way, and I made me think of Sanjay, who was looking for a new job, and it could apply to either one of them easily. You know? Right. So, yeah. Right. Well, this has been great. Uh, I mean, um, the only sad part is we're kind of out of time. We're running out of time here. But we want to thank everybody, first of all, who's been asking questions in the Law of Attraction Change My Life group. Thank you so much for coming in and, and sharing what's been going on in your life. We hope that uh, we've been helpful. I think we have because we've been getting some really positive comments, thank yous, and so forth from all the people who are asking questions. So you're welcome. We're glad that we were able to help you. And uh, Carlos and Linda, I, I hope you guys are going to have a great weekend. And uh, you know we'll be touching base in a week or so. I like this yep. Q&A stuff. It's good, isn't it? It's fun. It's, it's fun. It kind of keeps us on our toes. You know, we have to answer quickly. You know, what what comes snap to the, to you know the top of the head and so forth. And uh, you know, maybe uh, by next week we'll have uh, another batch of questions. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. It'd be fantastic. And uh, Carlos, I don't know what I, we haven't had a chance to chat like we normally do because you came in after it. But we hope that uh, the latest yeah. career moves are working out. You have to tell us about it sometime. But uh, keep it up. Yes, keep yes, up the I'm good running, work. I'm running around making, uh, manifesting uh, my reality here. So all right, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. yeah. Woo. All right. <laughs> so thank you all for listening, and we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.